Welcome back everybody to our 2D sandbox series in... Actually, I should probably play the game. Welcome back everybody to our 2D sandbox series in Unity. So in the last episode, we did auto jump, which is very nice and handy. Works like a charm. I'm not even pressing spacebar anymore. Um, I don't need to, but yeah. So that is auto jump done. Uh, and the series is actually coming very close to an end. Uh, we've pretty much implemented everything. The thing I'm going to implement today is some bedrock, because at the moment, once we get to the bottom of the world, and if I scroll out a bit, down here, you can see that the player could easily mine through this and just fall through the world. Uh, and that's not very, you know, not a good sign. So that's what we're going to implement today. We're just going to have a layer of bedrock at the bottom. We're going to have bedrock being unbreakable, of course. It's actually not going to be too hard to implement, so I'm thinking we could easily do that in a very short video today. Nice and easy. Um, but then, I think in the next episode, we might do, or towards the end of this one, we could do light blocks. Um, this is the Discord, by the way. If you haven't joined, join it now. Um, trust me, it's good for you. Let's get started on Bedrock. So, let's create a new tile class, of course. I'm just going to duplicate Dirt, or whichever one is you want. I'm just going to name this Bedrock, of course. Tile name is going to be Bedrock. The wall variant is... Shall we have a wall variant? Um, we probably should, yes, because it will ask for one. Tool to break is going to be none. Yes. In fact, we should probably just have another class being in our tile class, I think. Is it tile class? No, item class. Yes, so we have the tool to break is just a tool type. I'm going to add another tool type at the end this time, because last time I added that to start break everything. Um, and this is just going to say unbreakable. So that I can set my bedrock to be unbreakable, which means nothing can break it, of course. There we go. Is naturally placed, yes. Is stackable. It doesn't matter because we can't collect it. But yes, that is fine. Okay, so with bedrock done um, here, I just want to choose its sprites, so let's choose some nice bedrock sprites. I might just use this grey stone thing that it gives me. Uh, is there anything else that will work? Not really. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to use grey stone. So then I don't need the second element. Good. Done. Get rid of that. Cool. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate bedrock and create its wall variant. So um, is it yes bedrock underscore wall? And wall variant is going to not exist because this is our wall. For bedrock, the wall variant is obviously going to be bedrock wall. Um, Greystone, yes, yes, yes. In background should be tick, uh, ticked. Cool. Anything else we missed? No, I think that's it. Yes, cool. All right, so that's bedrock implemented. It's tile class at least. Um, we just now have to make it spawn. Uh, so let's see how we can do that. I might just make it so that uh, we have to add it to our tile atlas as well is another thing. So tile atlas, um, bedrock is going to be the same. So I'm just going to add it to the end here. So public tile class bedrock. In our terrain generation, obviously the first tile should obviously be bedrock. So down here in our generate terrain function, let's see, generate terrain. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, Generate noise textures, no, 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 generate terrain, here. What we want to do is simply say, uh, so with here we say if y is less than this, we should say, tile class that, um, right here might be a good place to say it, I'm thinking, because uh, here we say if it's less than height, then do this, else if y is less than height minus 1, then dirt, um, else if it's, at the top, then we set it to grass. It might be worth... Do we store a tile atlas here as well, by the way? Yes, we do. So we have a general tile atlas. So, in terms of testing right at, right now, I'm just going to do comment that line out. And just replace the top layer of our world with bedrock. So, tile class equals... Oh, not that one. Tile class, lowercase, yes. Equals... Tile atlas dot bedrock. And the other thing I'm going to do is say if y is equal to zero, then equals bedrock as well. I don't need these brackets either. 
and this is just going to say spawn first layer as bedrock. At the moment, bedrock is going to give us an error though every time we mine it because down here in our remove tile function, I think, or is this break tile? It's in our break tile function. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe it doesn't give us an error. Let me test it. I don't want a way to find out. We should get the first layer instead of grass being bedrock. We have an error. Object reference not set. Yes, that makes sense. I have not set the tile atlas. Um, over here, the tile atlas, we have to set bedrock to obviously be bedrock. Yes, so now we have bedrock as our first layer. And it is in fact unminable. Cool. It has wall variants as well, which it doesn't really need, but good to have. But yes, so that's the first layer of bedrock done. Down here, we are not getting bedrock, it looks like, though, are we? No, we are. Okay, cool. Yes, that's our bedrock sprite. It doesn't look very nice, I will admit, but um, doesn't matter. <laughs> However, you'll see that the issue is, of course, we are getting um, caves. So that's not good, because we obviously don't want caves to be there. Um, since that means the player can still fall out the world. Generate caves. I check if that, um, I should also check if generate caves and why it is greater than zero. So that we don't ca get caves on the first layer, if that makes sense. So we should just have a solid line of bedrock on the floor. Yes, that is what we have. It is indeed very successful. Nice. Cool. Nailed it. That is bedrock done. Uh, I should probably change the grass back to grass. <laughs> uh, so, yes, get rid of this line and change that, yes. The only reason I did that was just to test if bedrock is indeed unbreakable, um, which it is. So, good, success. With that done, I think I might add light blocks um, because that is another thing we wanted to implement. Uh, so, let's create a light block tile, at tile class. So as you can see, I've done a lot of playing around with the lighting, trying to get emission blocks to work. Um, I think I'm going to leave the tutorial here with just bedrock being implemented. And then because it looks like to do emitted light, em uh, emission blocks, it's going to require a big rewrite of the code. While most of it currently works, as you can see, I can place light blocks. A lot of, there's still a lot of artifacts and issues with lighting, um, as you can see. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is leave the tutorial here. I'm going to finish this series pretty soon with just a couple of things implemented. In fact, this actually might be one of the last episodes. Well, this could be the last episode for this 2D sandbox series. But yeah, so that is actually it. Uh, for the rest of the stuff you guys want to implement, um, you know, that is going to be more specific to your game. This has covered pretty much all the fundamentals you will need to create a sandbox game. Um, the rest of the stuff is just you coding in your own add-ons. So have fun with that, honestly. Um, I hope this base project proved useful to everyone. So the crafting is going to be in its inventory series, as you guys will have seen. Uh, lighting is going to be a separate video. Liquid separate video. Combat separate video. Um, apart from that, what have I missed? Uh, let's check my list. Um, Bedrock's done. Infinity Worlds, yeah, so that's another thing I wanted to mention. That's going to be in its own separate, maybe even a sub-series if it doesn't work in one video. Expect the separate videos now to be longer, more complicated, and more possibly difficult to follow because they are, like I said, going to be much more complicated than this. Um, I will explain them as best as I can, but obviously they are quite difficult concepts to grasp. And so I do not recommend that someone who's just getting started in coding follow them. You know, if you have followed the series and you found it difficult, got stuck with lots of errors, um, then possibly the rest of the videos may not be for you. However, um, that does not mean you cannot watch them. Obviously, go ahead, watch it, leave a like, of course. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. It's been a lot of work, but it's been fun uh, nonetheless. <laughs> um, hope you guys enjoy the series. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, that is all from me. We will be starting a new group of videos. I'm going to probably be going into 3D world generation soon. Um, keep in mind, 3D world generation does not mean 3D sandbox game. I am not remaking Minecraft. <laughs>
but I will teach you guys the basics of runtime mesh generation and all that. So look forward to that. That's going to be quite fun. Um, apart from that, that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.